but sadly, Warsaw was damaged extensively during World War II with over 85% of its buildings in ruins. Thankfully, today it's a bustling capital with a population of 1.8 million. One of my favorite buildings of the city is the Palace of Culture and Science at 778 feet tall. It's the fifth tallest building in the EU. The crowning feature of the city is Warsaw's Old Town. It was established during the 13th century and is full of history and medieval architecture. Like the main part of the city, the Old Town was almost completely destroyed during World War II, but it was miraculously restored. Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is V. Thank you for checking out this video. Today we are going to be seeing 10 best places to visit in, in Poland. Without further ado, let's get into the video and see what the 10 places to visit in Poland looks like. Let's do this. What's up guys? My name is Ryan and I want to show you some of my favorite places in the enchanting country of Poland. So here is my Polish top 10. Poland is home to some of the world's most stunning landscapes. From the medieval old town of Gdansk to the towering Tatra Mountains, Poland has so much to offer. Let's start this video off at the impressive city of Krakow. Now this may be one of my favorite cities in all of Poland. Located in the southern part of the country, Krakow was founded all the way back in the 7th century, so you best believe it's full of beautiful history and architecture. Now one of the most impressive sites is the Wawel Royal Castle. It was built during the 14th century and was the first UNESCO World Heritage Site. It features architectural styles from the medieval, renaissance, and baroque periods. Now from the castle, you can make the short 10 minute walk to the main square. This dates all the way back to the 13th century and it was the largest medieval town it squares in all of Europe, which is pretty crazy. I mean, it's just fascinating to think of all the history that took place here. Now in the corner of the square is the St. Mary's Basilica, which was built back in the 14th century and it's a perfect example of Polish Gothic architecture. Another interesting feature of Krakow is the Kosciuszko Mound. It's an artificial hill that was modeled after other prehistoric mounds in the city. It was built in 1820 to commemorate the national hero named Tadeusz Kosciuszko. The mount is 112 feet high and there's a serpentine path that takes you to the top to enjoy the panoramic views of Krakow and the Vistula River. Krakow is just such an amazing city and I hope you all can visit. After Krakow, we're going to head to the Tatra Mountains. Now located about a two hours drive from Krakow, the Tatras are a stunning mountain range that straddles the Polish and Slovakian border. Now the best town to access the Tatras is Zakopane, now located right at the base of the mountains. Zakopane is the perfect starting place for your mountain adventures. During the winter time, Zakopane is an ideal place to go skiing, and in the summer months, it's a prime place to start your hike into the mountains. One of the most impressive spots in the Tatras is the Morski Oko Lake. You can make the 16 kilometer round trip trek to the scenic lake. I mean, just such a phenomenal view up there. An interesting fact is that the Tatras are the smallest alpine mountain range in all of Europe and they're home to plenty of wildlife such as the Eurasian brown bear. I just love how the Tatras look. They have such a unique and jagged look to them and I just want to go hiking them this summer. Now if you're into World War II history, you can visit the Memorial of Auschwitz concentration camps. This is located about an hour's drive from Krakow. Now Auschwitz is infamously known to be one of the most horrific Nazi concentration camps. Over 1.1 million people died here. One of my favorite books I've ever read is called The Auschwitz Escape and it tells the story of how two prisoners made their daring escape from this concentration camp. Now after, we're going to head to the northern part of Poland to visit Sopot. Now located right on the Baltic Sea, Sopot was established in the 8th century and grew as a commercial trading post and fishing village. Over the centuries, Sopot faced adversity as it was abandoned, burned, and then rebuilt. But in the early 19th century, Sopot started to gain popularity thanks to its spa and public baths and it quickly became a holiday resort town. Today, Sopot is a thriving tourist attraction where there you can take a walk on Europe's longest wooden pier or you can enjoy the swans and endless sandy coastline. Now I understand why it's called the Polish Riviera. Now after Sopot, we're going to head over to neighboring Gdansk. Located just a 15 minutes drive from Sopot, Gdansk is one of Poland's oldest cities with a fascinating history with periods of Polish, Prussian, and German rule. 
The earliest mention of Gdansk was in the year 997 AD, and during the Middle Ages, Gdansk grew as an important seaport and shipbuilding town. It rose to be one of the wealthiest and largest cities in Poland until Warsaw's rapid growth in the 18th century. Today, Gdansk is one of Poland's most beautiful cities. I mean, I just can't believe it's old town. It's full of these perfectly placed houses that seem to go on forever. Another really cool feature that I like about Gdansk is how the canal runs right along the old town. It's often full of ships and it gives the city such a fun vibe. While you're there, you can just explore the streets of Old Town or take a walk along the canal. I mean, just such an incredible city. Now, just an hour's drive from Gdansk is the Malbort Castle. I mean, this is the largest castle in the world by land area, which is pretty crazy. It was built in the 13th century by the Teutonic Knights, who were German Catholic Crusaders. And as the number of the knights grew, so did the castle, which encloses an area of 52 acres. I mean, just crazy to think that people were able to build such buildings back then. More than half of Malwork Castle was destroyed during World War II, but thankfully it was rebuilt to its former glory. Now after Malbork, we're going to head over to the Missourian Lake District, located in northeastern Poland on the border of Kaliningrad. This lake district is one of the most visited lake districts in all of Central Europe, and it's home to over 2,000 lakes. It's a perfect place to go sailing, fishing, or just swim in the lake. I mean, I just can't think of a better place to go on a hot summer day. Now aside from the lakes, the area is full of beautiful forest, perfect for hiking and exploring. The Masurian Lake District is definitely a hidden gem that deserves a visit. Another scenic place for nature lovers is the Pianine National Park. Now located in both southern Poland and northern Slovakia, Pianine is one of the oldest and smallest national parks in all of Poland. I mean, I just think it's such a beautiful area. The river runs right through it and it acts as a natural border between Poland and Slovakia. The national park is home to many animal species such as the Eurasian link, which I think is like one of the coolest animals ever. One of my favorite features of the park is the three crowns. The rock feature is made up of five sharp limestone peaks that create quite the sight. Now another beautiful nearby spot is the Nieditsa Castle. This 14th century castle is located just a few minutes away from the park. I mean, this whole area is just incredible. Now after, we're going to head over to the beautiful city of Wrocław. I mean, it's such a tricky pronunciation. Now located in western Poland, about a three hours drive from Krakow, Wrocław is such a charming historical place. It's home to one of the most beautiful market squares in all of Europe. It's lined with elegant townhouses and cobblestone streets. Wrocław also has one of the most beautiful cathedrals in Poland. It was originally built in 1272, but has been damaged and rebuilt several times throughout the centuries. I just love its double spires. Bratswaf is just the perfect place to just walk around and explore for a day. Now for our final destination, we're going to head to Warsaw. Located on the Vistula River in East Central Poland, Warsaw is the capital and largest city in the country. Warsaw began to grow in the 16th century when the capital was moved there. It was called the Paris of the North, but sadly, Warsaw was damaged extensively during World War II with over 85% of its buildings in ruins. Thankfully, today it's a bustling capital with a population of 1.8 million. One of my favorite buildings of the city is the Palace of Culture and Science at 778 feet tall. It's the fifth tallest building in the EU. The crowning feature of the city is Warsaw's Old Town. It was established during the 13th century and is full of history and medieval architecture. Like the main part of the city, the Old Town was almost completely destroyed during World War II, but it was miraculously restored and was made a real heritage site in 1980. When you're there, you can just explore the square and marvel at all the history that took place in this medieval old town. Well, that is it for my Poland top 10. Let me know where your favorite place is in Poland in the comments below. I also. Wow, I don't know if it's okay to, to say that Poland is the home of um, architecture because most of the buildings here are so massive, like they are huge and they are so big. Poland is really beautiful, I must say, and I think um, I think the World War II really, really, really damaged a lot of things in Poland. But thank God, but it's amazing to see that they have been rebuilt, yeah, and they are back to their glory. Poland is really beautiful, and hopefully someday, one day, <laughs> well, let me not say. 
Thank you for watching my reaction. If you have any other place that you want me to see, any particular city you want me to see in Poland, you can, you can simply leave the link to the video in the description. I'll go check that out. Thank you for watching and see you in my next reaction. Bye.